Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, next lecture on this introduction to remote sensing and in under this uh, topic uh, we are going to discuss the very basic image uh, enhancement techniques how to improve the quality of an image. So far we have seen how to geometrically correct the image and uh, but uh, now in this one we will have uh, discussion on basic image enhancement uh, techniques very simple one. Uh, but before that just uh, I would like to uh, recap or refresh your memory saying that uh, uh, remote sensing images are nothing but a two dimensional matrix it is a raster data and uh, each cell is having a uh, pixel value and that pixel value is in terms of uh, positive integer values. And uh, over uh, this uh, shape of a cell in this case we call as a pixel uh, would be a square shape. However, uh, overall shape of an image or this two dimensional matrix can be either a square or rectangular. That means number of rows and number of columns need not to be same. They can be different, but the cell uh, uh, the cell shape has to be that means the pixel shape has to be a square in shape. And each cell each pixel is having a value and uh, that value is in integers and if I am having more number of bands like here bands k then I may be having pixel values depending on the which part of wavelength these bands are representing they will carrying the different values. In this particular schematic like for green band they are showing some other for blue, red and black. So, four, four bands are together are shown here just it is a schematic and a digital number for uh, say uh, column 5, uh, column 5 uh, row 4, uh, column 5 row 4 is uh, uh, is expressed as v, uh, VB542 and uh, that if I want to add it or uh, some make it something then it is going to be. Uh, so, I can address very easily as well by using column number or row number. Now, when we get the data from, uh, uh, from the satellites uh, that is the data acquisition we will see very quickly about data acquisition part as well we store the data in certain format. For image there are few formats which are followed word over and nowadays many the images which are available on net free of cost like Landsat images or other images generally they are already georeferenced. And if they are not georeferenced no problem we can do the georeferencing as well. But before that uh, the, the raw formats which are used uh, are three main most popular one are the three. One the first one in this is the BSQ format that is in short BSQ but we say band sequential format. So, that each line of the data followed immediately by the next line in the same spectral band. So, it is a band by band in, uh, formatting. So, suppose uh, it is a Landsat MSS data now there are four bands. So, first the first band would be written in a file then the second band, then the third band, then the fourth band. Now, there are advantages with writing or making such formats following such formats that if I am interested to read only band 2, then I will jump in while reading uh, through my program to band 2 and read the entire data. But if I am interested to read all four bands of a particular area, not the entire uh, image area then this type of uh, format is not suitable. So, people designed another format which is called band interleaved by pixel format. That means the first pixel of all bands in sequential order. So, first, first, uh, first pixel of first band, first pixel of second band, first pixel of third band, first pixel of fourth band and likewise if there are four band then, then will come second pixel of first band second pixel of uh, second band and likewise followed by second pixel of all bands followed by the third pixel of all bands and these are interleaved up to the number of pixels. So, if an image is having say 512 columns it will go till 512. This format provides optimal performance for spectral excess of image data good for hyper spectral images because hyperspectral remote sensing is parallelly uh, very nicely developing and therefore, for such kind of images this uh, um, BIP 
or bend interleaved by pixel format is going to be very good. And the third type uh, which is very popular is BIL, BIL format bend interleaved by line. Here instead of pixel entire line that means one row is written first for bend 1, then first row of bend 2 is written for second and likewise. So, the first line of the first band followed by the first line of the second band followed by the first line of the third band interleaved up to the number of bands. So, if there are four bands then all first lines of all four bands are written first in sequence then second line of all four bands are written and likewise. So, subsequent lines for each band are interleaved in similar fashion. This format provides a compromise in performance between special and spectral processing and is recommended file format for most NB processing tasks, good for images with 2060 bands. So, this is another issue because now we are also going for large number of bands means our spectral resolution is also improving. And for that BIL format this uh, NV is a soft image processing software, but uh, many softwares are having their own format NV is having a format which is BIL format. Like ER ADAS is having its own dot IMG format or another very popular image format is a GeoTIFF which was a TIFF format. Now, the another version of this uh, TIFF format which is called GeoTIFF, it is also having geography coordinate written first in the image. So, that format is very popular, many satellite images especially like Landsat and others are already georeferenced and available in GeoTIFF format and they are ready to go for any image processing uh, softwares or on GIS platform without any requirements of georeferencing. So, first the raw data once comes it is written either in BSQ, BIP or BIL form as per the requirements, as per the number of bands, as per the size, as per the for what purpose they are being recorded. And of course, it is possible to change from one format to another means from BSQ to BIL or BIL to B, BBP, uh, BIP can be changed, but it requires uh, further reading and uh, checking of accuracy. So, likewise here in uh, uh, this uh, uh, for uh, uh, different bands this is how we uh, write if we want to uh, write for uh, one combination then probably this is uh, one approach and uh, in case of uh, BSQ this is how uh, the first band uh, first line uh, first the band 1 is written then band 2 is written band 3 is written band 4 is written in case of BA. and in case of and this uh, pixel or BIP then this is how and then uh, or uh, first pixel of first band, first pixel of second band and likewise you can check also the values and uh, then the BIL the line by line. So, here the first line then second line then uh, second line is the first line of band 2 then this third line is the first line of band 3 the fourth line here is the first line of band 4 likewise it is written. And same thing here that the image one band at time in other words the data of all pixels of band 1 are stored in this. This is very convenient and very easy to understand that bands are written in sequence uh, the first band is written first, second band is written second and so on so forth. But as I have mentioned that if I am not interested in the entire image area I am interested only in the part area and my image size is very huge then this format is not very efficient one. Then probably BIP or BIL are going to be much more. So, when interleaved by pixel that is BIP format is similar to BIL except, uh, except that each pixel is written band by band. And uh, then here uh, uh, this uh, and third one is the band interleaved by line the data stored pixel information band by one for each line row an example given a three band image all three bands of the data are written in row one and then so on so forth. So, likewise uh, we can write uh, the data as per our requirement we can change from one uh, data format to another as well. As I have mentioned first the image is acquired that is the data acquisition it is done through satellite earth stations. I will just show you we have already 
has seen one NOAA AVHR earth station which is operational in IIT Rudki that I will show you. So, the first thing is the image acquisition. So, once the satellite has scanned a part of the earth, the image has to be acquired by the earth station and once the data has been acquired, then other steps will start that is the image processing. And basically uh, making geometrically corrected image one step another one is improving the image quality so that our interpretation is visual or machine based becomes highly reliable. So, for that uh, we go for and the third one is uh, image classification after enhancement one may go for image classification creating some output maps like land use map, forest density cover map, a lithological map, a soil cover map and so on so forth. And finally, uh, one would like to assess the accuracy part after doing image classification. So, these are the uh, you know broad four steps data acquisition, image acquisition as I have said that it can be done by satellite earth station uh, these uh, uh, figures or slides uh, are repeating here just for the completeness I have kept here you need to have a antenna rotating antenna tracking antenna as shown here then you have to have a receiver and uh, then a, a computer system which will uh, which will acquire the data and uh, keep the data as per your desired uh, data format. Once the data is in the system then the processing starts. So, basically if we I if we define the what is basically image processing is that image processing includes it should be read as image processing includes enhancing an image extracting information features from an image. And the computerized routine for information extraction that is a, a classification pattern recognition from satellite images to obtain categories of information about specific features. So, image processing includes image quality and statistical evaluation. Uh, so, we also try to assess what is the quality of an image, we also try to perform some statistical uh, processes on it and uh, because uh, before we go for further processing or enhancement of the images, we must know what, what is the minimum value in my image, what is the maximum pixel value, what is a standard deviation, how pixels are distributed that prior information will help me to decide which enhancement technique would be better for my uh, that particular image. So, this statistics is image dependent each scene even of the same area belonging to two different season will have different statistics because image images are going to be different. So, that is why before we choose for appropriate image processing technique image enhancement technique we must first assess through or do the evaluation through statistical analysis. Then of course, radiometric correction as I have been saying this is generally done by the operators of the satellites. Geometric corrections has to be done by the user itself and for especially for higher spatial resolution data this has to be done very accurately very sincerely. Image enhancement and sharpening as per the requirements for what purpose the satellite image is going to be used for keeping that thing in mind accordingly the enhancement the image quality enhancement and a sharpening that is done through the spatial filtering which we will discuss in next, next lecture uh, can be done. And then uh, finally, you reach to the stage where then you can go for feature extraction that is uh, image classification may be pixel based may be object oriented based nowadays many uh, very innovative image uh, classification techniques have been developed. But uh, the problem with these uh, techniques is that they might be good for one particular image. But if I get the same area image of another season apply the same way the image classification technique I may not get the same results. So, because not only the season has changed, but the entire statistics has changed entire image has changed and therefore, uh, the results may not be that good or accurate uh, for image classification. So, it's a, it becomes sometimes a scene dependent image classification, but anyway that will be discussed later. And once you go for image classification of course, we go for accuracy assessment and that how accurately the image classification a land use suppose if I have uh, classified a, a, an area as a bare rocks or bare soils then really on the ground it is there and how accurately I have classified for that 
a quality assessment about the accuracy has to be done. And then uh, I make uh, take that classified output image to in a GIS platform use it or may create some more products using it that is possible. And if I am uh, going for time series data analysis uh, then I may go for chain detection studies. For example, if I am using thermal images I have created a, a output that is a sort of image classified output like land surface temperature map that LST map and if I am in a time series maps LST map of the same area of different dates then I may see the changes which has occurred between say one month 15 days or one week. So, that chain detection can also be performed it is need not to be that chain detection has to be only after classification even before classification can be done. So, it does not matter, but chain detection is only possible once we are having a time series data at least two images are required. Suppose there, there have been there has been an earthquake and I am looking the ground changes especially on the slopes of the mountain whether some landslides have a new a induced earthquake induced landslide have occurred or not. So, I need an image which is just uh, uh, before the earthquake and uh, uh, preferably the same satellite image, same sensor image after the earthquake. And if uh, the dates of these two images are very close and in between the earthquake has occurred then chain detection with high reliability, high level of confidence can be done. And then I can conclude that uh, whatever the changes which I am seeing between pre earthquake image and post earthquake image are induced by that particular event which has. So, that event might be earthquake, that event might be a landslide, that event might be flooding, drought or any other thing. So, it depends on the phenomena and then and the availability of uh, images for chain detection. Chain detection is becoming very powerful, very useful thing nowadays because of we are having long availability of archive of data. Now, image quality which uh, uh, you know ultimately if image is good then interpretation will be good classification will be good everything would be uh, uh, having better results. So, many image remote sensing data sets contain high quality accurate data sometimes error or noise is introduced in the remote sensing data that might be because of environment and uh, atmospheric scattering cloud may be haze fog mist all these environmental factors may uh, deteriorate the image quality. For example, like a, if a time is not season is not that important then the image which has taken just after the rain especially say for in case of India especially in northern India where in winter time you are having generally a very hazy scenes. So, if an image is taken just after the rain when sun is there you would find a very high quality image because the environmental or atmospheric distortions would be minimum no haze, no fog, no clouds nothing except the sun illuminating the surfaces and therefore, high quality image can be acquired. But then you need to have a orbiting satellite there at that time. Random or systematic uh, malfunctioning of remote sensing systems we have discussed in previous uh, uh, topic uh, while discussing the georeferencing can be corrected to some extent uh, uh, by involving georeferencing. And if there are some random things then uh, probably by human interventions can be corrected and sometimes some errors are so bad that they cannot be corrected and such images cannot really be used at all. So, uh, but uh, one thing one has to remember that the uh, generally pre uh, generally pro, uh, image processing we divide in two steps one we call as pre processing another one is processing not really post processing, but processing. So, this pre processing basically involves the georeferencing and uh, conversions earlier when we uh, always never had the uh, digital satellite images we used to scan or convert by some means and uh, analog to digital and that uh, all considered under the uh, pre-processing pre uh, georeferencing is can also be considered under pre-processing subheading. So, this uh, improper uh, uh, pre-processing may bring some uh, problems later on in your data analysis.
Now, as I have mentioned that your, uh, in, in this uh, image processing, image enhancement that is improving the quality of image, so that our interpretation becomes easier and accurate. For that, we need to first understand the statistics of all individual images. As I have also mentioned, the an image of the same area taken in two different seasons will have two different statistics. So, each seed, the statistics of an image depends on that particular Im, uh, scene or image. So, if I if I if I see here the histograms, which is nothing but the uh, here I am having the pixel values. Uh, suppose this is 8 bits so 0 to uh, 255 and I am having frequency and that is a typical histogram. If it is all well distributed that means say uh, the uh, value 127 is, a, is going to be in the center and the highest then all our mean, median and mode all will be the same. And this in this condition we call a normal distribution. Though in real images Theoretically, it is possible, but in real images, one never gets such kind of a normal distribution in the histogram. You may get a skewed kind of distribution of pixel values and their frequency. So, mean might be here, median is elsewhere and mode is that is the maximum is uh, the threshold might be different. And uh, there might be a, a positively skewed, there might be a negatively skewed and uh, this is negatively skewed the one, this is positively skewed one and uh, there might be multinodal distribution. So, there are a uh, kind of uh, two sets and this is possible because half of the image might be having a forest area, half of the image might be having agricultural land and now both are having vegetation, but their signatures in an infrared channel are going to be different and therefore, I might be having bimodal distribution. So, it depends if, if it is a desert kind of area, I may get a distribution something like uniform distribution or it is a water body or a completely dense forest, I may get a completely distribution. So, based on this, uh, this is the first step as mentioned here in the image processing to check the image statistics. The mean is the arithmetic average and is defined as the sum of all brightness value observation divided by the number of observations. The median is the value midway in the frequency distribution, one half of the area below the distribution curve is right of the median and the other half on the left and the mode is the value that occurs most frequently in the distribution as shown in these examples uh, in a distribution and usually highest point on the curve histogram. It is common however to encounter more than one mode in a remote sensing data set as mentioned here is a bimodal. And this is very common thing, it is not uh, uh, very rare uh, depending on the uh, objects which are present within one image. Now, in image pre-processing steps basically to create a accurate representation through geometric corrections that is already discussed under georeferencing, then radiometric corrections generally we do not perform, it is done by the operators itself, but if they have not done we have to find uh, some uh, utility software programs to do it, uh, but need, need, need to have lot of data about the sensor. Atmospheric corrections are also performed, again there are certain models which are used to remove atmospheric distortions from the images, but those uh, models will also require lot of input about the ground conditions when the image was acquired and that uh, becomes very, very difficult to find. So, uh, what we go for? improving the image quality is to go for image enhancement that may minimize the uh, atmospheric distortions and uh, other problem. Of course, geometric distortions has to be corrected using georeferencing technique. An image can be uh, ordered at different levels of correction enhancement. The agencies like in India, there is a NRSA, NDC. National Remote Sensing Agency, NDC is National Data Center, they provide data about Indian satellites. You can order a completely processed data or you can order a raw data. So, if you are having capability of processing by yourself, you can buy raw data at a cheaper rate 
of a large area and process yourself. So, you will have your own confidence rather than depending on others. But if you do not have the capabilities and there is so much setup, you can directly order the complete correction, a corrected and enhanced uh, image data. Rectivation as we have discussed uh, to remove distortions, here rectification has also involved and uh, the atmosphere, but generally it will be putting in the atmospheric correction technique. In initially when we had this MSS or later on also recently it was noticed in case of in uh, Landsat 7 and this uh, stripping or de-stripping and noise removal. So, that also we put in uh, this uh, because these are errors due to the uh, sensors uh, and uh, so, this radiometric correction is a pre-processing method to reconstruct physically curvated values correcting the spectra errors and distortions caused by the sensors. But you need to have the information about suppose I am having a this uh, data has been acquired by linear array. So, whether these uh, if uh, these all CCTs have been calibrated perfectly then the stripping de-stripping noise will not come. But if they have not been, then this is stripping or lines in your image will appear. And in order to correct that one, we need to have the data about individual CCTs. And if once we apply that correction, then spectral errors that is uh, creating a stripping, these stripping can be removed. For example, here that this is because of stripping. So, these stripping can be done. Uh, once the data is available about uh, individual CCD and a smooth image can be generated. Uh, drop lines sometimes there you might be drop lines especially in the thermal data set it has been observed uh, because of saturation because of high temperature value objects present on the earth. So, it takes some time to cool down the sensor and therefore, uh, there might be some drop lines are uh, commonly replaced. Uh, manually it can be also done if there are not many drop lines then manually perhaps these can also be replaced. Uh, in radar data you will find lot of speckle or noise that too can be removed and your image can be uh, made very smooth. And so the interpretation of such images uh, can uh, well, but it, it will only happen in case of a normal passive remote sensing when your sensors have not been nicely calibrated. Now, atmospheric corrections which requires lot of input, it, the, the distortions might come from various reasons. So, solar radiation is largely unaffected at its travels through the vacuum of space. However, when it interacts with the earth's atmosphere, it is selectively scattered and absorbed. And the sum of these two forms of energy loss is called atmospheric attenuation. And this, this introduces the distortions in your image. The general goal of atmospheric correction is to turn digital image brightness value recorded by remote sensing system into scaled surface reflectance values. That means removing the entire effect of atmosphere from an image assuming that there were no atmosphere. In uh, some earlier lectures I have mentioned that uh, like uh, on the earth we are having a thick atmosphere, relatively thick atmosphere, but on the uh, uh, moon uh, we do not have um, very, we are having very thin atmosphere and therefore, atmospheric distortions are also very less. And therefore, uh, the images which are coming from the satellite which are orbiting uh, Mars surface like Mangalyaan are giving a very high quality images. because there are no distortions due to atmosphere. But uh, if uh, on the if we are looking the similar kind of image quality then these have to be removed. Now, the atmospheric conditions globally are not the same in one area they are different another area they are different and one time they are different in the same area in afternoon they are different in evening they are different. So, it, when the data is being acquired all the inputs which will go for atmospheric corrections, the ground data has to be collected from that image area. Then only we can go for high quality atmospheric corrections. If we use some models, then lot of assumptions are involved. So, these values can then be compared to use to conjunction with the scaled surface reflectance values obtained anywhere else on the planet. So, if we, if we go for that kind of thing, then 
a, 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 that means we are going for modeling assuming that things are same at two different places or in within one image and uh, that kind of assumption for a coarser resolution data which covers a very large area may not be very good. And there are uh, as I have mentioned that if we go in much detail in this part that atmospheric correction required because uh, there are a lot of phenomena scattering, absorption, refraction, reflection all are happening at the same time. This is the your the, uh, the illumination source, this is the satellite and uh, in um, while the signals going back all these uh, scattering, absorption, refraction and reflection are occurring and it is a long distance it has to first pass from atmosphere and remaining in the space. So, there are several ways to atmospherically correct remote sensing data one uh, some of relatively straightforward while others are complex being founded on physical principles and requiring a significant amount of ground data to function properly. Uh, this is example is shown as that an image which was suffering from some atmospheric distortions like haze and other things once uh, those things have been removed then a, an image uh, quality has definitely improved. So, after image corrections using uh, this uh, model uh, one can uh, really sometimes can improve the image quality. Uh, uh, one, one another way of uh, uh, re uh, removing a or improving image quality is a applying a, a brute force correction that is uh, possible. Uh, by uh, by uh, using a simple histogram stretch. So, if uh, assuming that uh, in, a, in an image value should have been 0 as well as some pixel should have carried value 0, another should have carried uh, 255 if I am discussing an image of uh, 8 bit. Then, uh, then I can stretch and this is called a brute force stretch kind of thing. And if through this process in a very uh, straightforward manner uh, I am I am also removing uh, the distortions which are causing probably by the atmosphere. But uh, this is not a very standard uh, method for uh, removing atmospheric distortions, but if there is no other choice available then probably this uh, uh, linear stretch of a satellite image uh, can be applied and uh, then uh, these distortions a due to atmosphere can be removed. Now, image enhancement further we are discussing that improves interpretability of image by increasing apparent contrast among various features. Basically, we are looking more contrast so that individual objects features can be identified very easily that is the main purpose of image enhancement. Now, contrast manipulation that is contrast stretching may be special feature uh, manipulation that means special filtering which we will discuss in next topic uh, special filtering edge enhancement may be Fourier transformations for based on this Fourier analysis based on fast Fourier transformations uh, multi image manipulations instead of uh, doing only on one image and uh, generally we are having choices of several bands. So, we go for multi image analysis maybe some techniques like band ratioing principal component analysis vegetation indices uh, like a normalized difference vegetation index and so on so forth. Uh, so, on one, uh, one variable that is one single band on multi variable uh, multi variate analysis can also be performed. So, uh, whatever the techniques which are available in mathematical domain for matrix or matrices can be used also in image because after all it is a two dimensional matrix. The example here of uh, removing this thing is like this that uh, this is the original histogram this is how this image uh, histogram looks by by model and uh, the values the minimum value in this input image is a t4 and maximum is 153 whereas it is expected that these values should have been 0 and 255 need not to be because it is not all the time that you will have a object in in a single image which will have almost no reflection and uh, same time you would have an image in your uh, a, a pixel in, in your image which will have the perfect reflection in 8 bit image that is you will achieve 255 value. So, if it is not then a simple linear stretch redistributing the values between 84 to 153 
into 0 to 255 can improve the image quality and this is also called the Bruce brute force and indirectly you are also getting rid of some effects of atmosphere and definitely uh, this is the most common one very simple one straightforward one you are treating each pixel in the same way a linear stretch will improve image quality very quickly and this kind of uh, uh, image uh, enhancement is called linear stretching. Now a uh, same example here is, is that histogram is distribution is this minimum value is 60, 158 is the maximum value. I if I redistribute without any stretch then it is going to be like this but if I uh, do the linear stretching then I am using whatever the range of pixels available to me that is between 0 to 255 instead of original range which is available between 60 to 158. So, when I stretch these linearly like a rubber uh, seat then I am improving the contrast in the image and ultimately image quality by a very quick method. So, here uh, the input pixel values are 60 to 158 after stretching they will become and so that once their values have been redistributed definitely the contrast among different pixels that means different features will improve and will be higher. Uh, there is a another way of doing is the histogram stretch that now instead of just uh, uh, you know uh, changing the value along the x axis now I am involving the frequency of pixel values occurrence and uh, then histogram stretch that wherever the frequency is higher that area those pixels will be stretched more and wherever the frequency of pixels is less those areas will be stretched less and why this we call as histogram equalization and uh, the, uh, the values which we are between 60 to 90 2 have been stretched between 0 to 255 and wherever I had the more density of values are stretched more uh, or more frequency of values. So, this is called histogram equalization and uh, there uh, the, ch uh, the changes which you can see very easily that how when this uh, histogram was stretched then uh, the frequency will change and uh, my image may look altogether different. And this is another example of histogram equalization that uh, I am changing now playing with the frequency of occurrence of pixels and creating a different kind of contrast in image. So, here you can see in a zoomed part also you can see the distribution. So, definitely image quality has improved the pixels which has the high frequencies uh, are kept as it is but pixels which has the low frequencies are giving more stretching. So, you say in that way. Uh, one way of doing this. So, this brings to the end of very simple basic techniques of image enhancement by which you can improve the image quality. Thank you very much.